Everyone, hello, this is Ringtail Randall again, and we return once more to the 16-bit summer. Now, I, I know what you're thinking. You've already seen the video title, and you're like, Randall, you've been giving a lot of love to Sega games lately. Well, the truth of that is that I really used to be a much bigger Sonic fan than I'm a Mario fan. Way back in the day in the 16-bit era, Sonic was my favorite series. And with the way that Sonic's career has gone nowadays, I am sad to say that I loved Sonic back in the 16-bit era, and that is the way I'll always remember him. I I just can't fathom this where everything has gone after Sonic Adventure 2. I'm sorry. Nothing against the Sonic series, but it's just not my thing anymore. It's not what I grew up with. <laughs> it's not Sonic anymore to me. And... I can't really let's play the mainstream games and get away with it at this stage of exposure, so we're going to look into another obscure title that never got as much publicity as I really initially hoped it would have. Now, before we begin, tell me what you know. Ah, uh, you know what? First, let me just roll this intro for you so you can get a feel for what we're doing here. This is for the Sega Game Gear, the handheld cartridge that was actually the, I believe, the first 16-bit handheld. Yep, before... I think it's the only 16-bit handheld, because the Game Boy Advance is 32-bit, isn't it? Nah. Technicals, technicals. Now, tell me what you know about the Sonic Canon, like, the order that the games came in. Most people you ask will probably say, well, Sonic 1, and then Sonic 2. No, there was a game in between the two. And this game here is that game, because this is before Tails met Sonic. So the game we are about to play is the second ser the second game in the chronological series. And honestly enough, this is where Tails got all of his uh, mechanic and just technical skills. This is Tails' Adventures for the Game Gear. A game I did not get a chance to completely be as a kid because I apparently was not a very smart kid with these adventure games. <laughs> well, I'm I'm much older now. I'm about 15 years older than I was way, way, way back. <laughs> so I think I reckon I can do this. Practice run went well, and hopefully the LP will go well too. Well, let's get right into. Let's not get back into the intro. We just saw it. Let's get right into Tales of Adventure, shall we? Here we go. And I'm very excited for this, because I was just blown away when I replayed this game and saw how much was crammed into it. Tiny little cartridge. Not that long of a game. Just a brilliant concept. And just seeing the world through the eyes of the sidekick is something different. It, it really is. You can't really fathom it until you try it yourself. So, I'm gonna shut up and we're gonna try it ourselves. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, I am Tails. Well, you should know the basics of Tails. Jump, duck, fly. Except you have a stamina bar on this. You cannot fly again if you're in the animation right here. Cannot. Oh, yeah, you can. Hold on, let me see after I exhaust my stamina. Yeah, you can, but when you gain momentum while you're falling after you uh, exhaust your stamina, you'll just plummet. And Tails' main attack is bombs. Who needs athletics when you have weapons of mass destruction? that you manufactured in your garage. Ah, uh, yeah. The <laughs> the main hero gets to punch people. The smart guy gets to blow them up. Aha! Uh -huh. And as you're gonna see, there are several other paths here. Which means this is something that will make you think, I can't blow this, I can't blow this up, so I'm gonna have to come back much later. And this is a very interesting title. It's something far different to the Sonic series. I simply didn't like it as a kid because it wasn't Sonic. It wasn't the Sonic I knew then, but phew, I love it now because all the Sonic games I love are the ones I grew up with. After middle school, I was done with Sonic forever. I really didn't want to. If, if Sonic Team bounces back and actually goes back to the series the way it was meant to be, then heck yeah, I'll go back to it, but I'll sit, I'll sit idle to see. And as you noticed, when I got struck up there, I didn't lose all my rings. And I'm gonna recover that ring. 
so I'm not quite sure if you noticed it quite yet, but our ring count up there is our HP. It is not necessarily our currency. So, I, I'm not quite sure if you've played Zelda 2 or Adventure Island 2, but it's very akin to those two games, where they're adventure-type games where you get items to progress. Very interesting genre, for sure. I have not had the chance to play through a whole lot of these. But, oh man, I love them to death. I really do. What's up here? Nothing! Okay, get out of my way, birdie! Oh, no, 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 no! And yes, uh, uh, different damage sources deal more damage. That's something to be expected with HP. So it doesn't necessarily mean you have 10 hits when you have 10 rings. Ah, no, okay. I can't fly across that, so no, 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 no. That was close. <laughs> that was too close. Okay. Well, now that I'm down here, let's at least see what's here. No way I can't go. Man, I'm going to have to remember about all this whenever I can break stuff like that. Okay. Oh, no, 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 right in my face. <laughs> Good job, Bert. But the learning curve of this game is pretty steep, really. It's, it's pretty challenging for a game based around a uh, children's series. But this is the way we loved games back then. We loved them a bit challenging. We don't like the easy mode stuff that today has to offer. Well, quote unquote easy mode stuff that today has to offer. Oh, thank you, good sir. Oh, that was close. I should have taken a hit there. And you can also drop bombs. But they travel... Uh, I never use the drop bombs because they don't travel quite in the arc. I need them to, to suit the situation. And whoa! No, 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 no! Oh, whew. And really, I love this game now because look at all these visuals. They are on par with the Genesis. I do believe the sound chip is actually 8... No, it's not 8-bit. It's more than 8-bit. Because there was a voice track in the Sega opening. Couldn't tell you, but it's... It's a pleasant sound to come back to after all these years. Hello! A Chaos Emerald! And now my HP max has increased. And what this also will do when I get a Chaos Emerald is it will increase my flight stamina too. Only slightly. But... That is our heart piece in this game, so... Whoa! Keep that in mind. And I skipped an entire section. Let's go back and make sure I didn't miss anything. Now when, um... Shoot, for the sake of the LP, I'm going to be going back through several sections again. So when I go into a new section, I'm going to jump cut and save y'all the time. I don't want to waste your time too much watching me backtrack toward through stages. Courtesy to all of my viewers. Okay. I'm just gonna go back that way. There's no real point for me coming back now, was there? <laughs> okay. And really, this does not feel like a Sonic game, does it? No, because you're not running past huge landscapes. You're taking your time and really thinking. So, thinking a little bit through the situation. Right now it's mostly brawn, but there's not a whole lot of thinking to be done. Oh, okay. That's different. Usually in a classic game, when you hear the music change, something's happening. And really, you have to appreciate the music. Back then, this is when Sonic series had some of its best music, I think. Still can't beat it today. Vocals or not. Oh, okay, it's our first boss. That's a funky looking machine, brother. And it kind of saunters when it walks. <laughs> I'm just gonna hang above your head, if that's cool. I'm just gonna hang above your head. Can the robot not turn around? But the boss battles are pretty basic. Some of them you'll have to think. Some of them you'll just have to ah, use brute force. Like this one was brute force. There we go. Yeah, chew on that. Come on, let me scroll, buddy. There we go. Ooh. Ooh. And now, let I'm going to actually explain this in example. I'm not going to show you the remote robot quite yet. Actually, yes, I am. You know I like to go for 15 minutes. We're only 9 minutes in. We're going to go just a bit longer. Not too awful long. Get out of here, rat. Come on. Come on. Whoa! Okay, we're not going that way. That thing's frightening me. Okay. Ah, no, 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 no. Lava bad. Lava bad. 
And if you see idle uh, breakables on the walls, that's usually where you can replenish your rings. Like right here. Boop! Two rings. So definitely save them for when you need them. I usually start using them when I have missing like 20% of my HP. Which is now. Get them, get them, get them. They don't last that long. <laughs> you gotta be quick, viewers. You gotta be very, very quick. And with each section of this game, you have to be very thorough, because it's very easy to miss something. Very, very easy to miss something if you're not looking everywhere. And that's actually where the remote control robot comes in handy. So let me show you how it works. Press B. And now I have control of the robot. And the cool thing about the robot is, it does not take damage. See? I can walk in lava, I'm just fine. But for now, it also cannot attack. So mainly, it's used as a scout. <laughs> and to get through small crevices. So for now, I'm gonna go scout back toward that section I did not tend to in the beginning. Make sure I didn't miss something. Alright, little robot. Here we go. Saunter on over here, make sure I didn't miss something. Aha! I did miss something, and the robot can also pick things up for you. There we go. And now we got a hammer! I don't know what to use for it yet, but we'll find out with time. And if you ever want the robot to come back to you, just tap B, and it'll return to you from any section. Very cool little thing to have. You'll see me scouting with it often because I don't want to get myself into excessive trouble, and I tend to do that in this kind of game. Okay, just gotta make sure I'm on my bombs. Oh. Oh, that blast radius is very particular. Oh no! There we go. Okay. This is the first game I had for Game Gear as well. I had Sonic Triple Trouble, and that was a pretty good game. It didn't be it did not beat the console version by any means, but whoo, it was a good one. Hey look! It looks like we're gonna need someone here too! And this is his main purpose. And you can go through enemies. Nothing will happen. Nothing will happen at all. Ooh, what's this? A remote bomb! Alright, our next weapon. I do believe we will get to see this in action as well, so let's move on and see. Let's go up here first. Aha! See, with a regular bomb, it'll burst right there. You can't do anything with it, but with a remote bomb, slide it right in there. Boop! There we go! We're good, we're golden! Let's get in there! Ah! Let's not get in there! Okay. I'm gonna need some rings pretty soon. Oh! <laughs> that damn momentum! <laughs> and also, a cool thing about the remote bomb is, uh, if your regular bomb isn't going to make it, and you throw it, it can slide into something, and as soon as it hits something, it'll explode. Ooh, careful! Uh, careful is not my middle name. My middle name is Alan. Okay. Oh, is that lava down there? Yes, I am actually going to use it to check. Oh no, it's not. Okay. Okay. Whoa! I don't think I can get through that. Get real careful, like. Okay, so we're not going down that way. Sorry about that. Oh, no, no, no. Well, I guess we can check. We got the hammer, didn't we? Okay. Doesn't seem like it does anything. I don't think the remote bomb's any more powerful than the regular bomb is. Oh, okay. Well, that's that. There was no ring recharging station. I really need one. I really need a ring recharging station. Okay. Really careful here. Oh, rings. At least I think that's a ring recharging station. It's pretty particular. And most things that are not bosses will die in one hit in this game. So you don't have much to worry about in the sense of, uh, well, how many hits you can deal with something. Fly, Tails, fly. Okay. Very careful. Oh, okay. 
That looks like a remote bomb section. It looks like I'm about to die. Yeah! <laughs> I'm gonna get myself killed, viewers! Not intentionally. Oh, I love that cling. That cling will save you in situations like this. Oh, okay. Whenever you see something like this and you can't fit through, it's remote bomb time. Shoot. Oh, actually, you know what? That's fine. Because I think Tails can fit through that. Ah, oh, oh, no. Oh, no. What HP left? A singular unit of HP left. If I game over, I'll end it here. Because when you game over, it just puts you back where you were. And gives you a password. A, a 16 digit password. I don't know why they make them that long. I don't know why they thought that was a good idea back in the day, but they, they did. It's just what they did. Oh, that bat is gonna get me. I know that bat's gonna get me. I know he is. It's my destiny. Ah, no! Oh, good. Oh, that's so good! Six rings! Okay, I can live on six rings. Real careful! Real careful with this part here. Real careful. The ring's down there. No point going there. Okay. Oh, I don't like this. Okay. Steady. Steady. Woohoo! Yeah, there we go. Like right here with the remote bomb? Not so bad. Slide it. There you go. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, I'm dead. Well, viewers, that's it for Tales of Adventure for today. I am looking forward to doing this LP, and I really hope you're looking forward to watching it. So, this has been Tales of Adventure. We will pick up next time. And the Volcanic Cavern. Thanks for watching, everyone. I will see you another time. So long.